Well, this happens to be another Harley Davidson wheel, this time a rear one, and off a different machine to the front one I rebuilt yesterday. And um, this one came in because it had five broken spokes which I've replaced. Um, there's the broken ones there. And uh, they were all on the, uh, the drive side, although that shouldn't really make a difference because uh, the torque should be distributed evenly through the hub to both rows of spokes, both sides. But anyway, um, there was five broken spokes all on the drive side, three inners and two outers. And in order to get access to get the replacements in, I had to slack off pretty much all of the spokes because um, the spokes, the neighbouring spokes that had to come out of the way to allow me to put the inner ones in were a little bit too long to just undo and drop out the way because they were part way through the holes. So I had to slacken the spokes off so that I could move the rim about to uh, drop the neighbouring spokes out the way while I put the replacements in. I've got all that done, I've got it built up and trued and uh, now it's time to have a look at it with the string line. And uh, I checked it before I stripped it because it was still spinning quite true in spite of having five broken spokes which out of 40 incidentally that's 12.5% of the entire structure of the wheel was uh, missing and ineffective. Uh, as you can see there the string line just sort of coincides with the edge of the hub and if I take it round underneath and swap hands you can see that just like on the other side the string line coincides with the edge of the hub so when wheels have got equal length spokes both sides in both directions they usually tend to be uh, built up so the centre line of the rim corresponds with the centre line of the hub. So I know I've got that right. So we get the string line out of the way now. And next, we'll give it a spin. I've got my dial gauge there, set for any vertical run out. Let's see what we've got. One revolution of the face of the clock is one millimetre. So we're well within and under half a millimetre there. With uh, just really just the blip at either extreme, so that's not bad at all for a used alloy rim that's uh, you know fabricated. There's a weld in it which uh, gives a blip to the reading anyway. I'll take my marking tape off next, off the edge of the rim if I can. Stuck quite well, wouldn't stick before. But get it out of the way. And I'll just reset the dial gauge on the edge of the rim to check any side to side run out we may have. Let's see if that camera will just stay put there for a minute. Put the dial gauge on the edge of the rim and we'll check what we've got there. That's well under half a millimetre as well, so I'm very happy with that. And last but not least, let's see what uh, tune the spokes play and see if they're all going to sound similar to each other. There's 20 of them on a the side, so here we go, we should have 20 ding ding dings each side. There's 20 there, and Twenty there, and they're all playing pretty much the same note. Either that, or I'm tone deaf. So, one wheel ready to go again. But I'm going to point out to the owner that if he had, as he had five broken spokes, that he'd best keep an eye on the other 35 because. Uh, they're probably not as strong as they were when they were brand new, but they've all tightened up okay and they're all playing a good sort of uh, matching note to each other. So, probably some life left in them yet, but if he sees any of them appearing to be loose or has any doubts at all, I would recommend that really he probably consider rebuilding the wheel with a full new set of spokes. But as it stands, that's done. I've done what he asked me to. It's spinning truly, it should be strong um, and it's ready to go back on his Harley.
Happy days.